Hello everyone. Welcome to Sam Science View channel. In today's video, we are going to listen to a science fact. What is the structure of hair and how does it grow? Before getting to the video, please watch this entire video and if you have any science related queries, you can comment about it and get it rectified through this channel. Now let's get into the video. For many people, hair is a natural part of their look and an expression of their personality. Hair can also offer protection. For instance, it helps to keep the sun's rays from reaching our scalp. Eyelashes and eyebrows keep dust, dirt and sweat out of our eyes. Even the hairs in our nose and ears help to keep out germs and other foreign objects. Body hair helps to regulate our body temperature. The hairs stand up when it's cold, keeping the air that is warmed by the body close to the body like a warming layer of hair. Let's now see about the different types of hair. Aside from a few places like the palms of our hands or the soles of our feet, the entire surface of our body has hair on it. The two main types of hair are the shorter and thinner vellus hairs, that is peach fuzz, found on the body and the longer and thicker terminal hairs. Examples of terminal hairs include the hair on our head, facial hair, eyelashes, eyebrows, pubic hair, chest hair and belly hair. How much of each hair type you have varies from person to person and also depends on your age and sex. Children's bodies mostly have wellness hair for instance. About 30% of the body surface is covered with terminal hair in women compared to about 90% in men. Now let's see the hair structure. Each hair has a hair shaft and a hair root. The shaft is the visible part of the hair that sticks out of the skin. The hair root is in the skin and extends down to the deeper layers of the skin. It is surrounded by the hair follicle, which is a sheath of skin and a connective tissues, which is also connected to a sebaceous gland. Each hair follicle is attached to a tiny muscle called erector pili that can make the hair stand up. Many nerves end at the hair follicle too. These nerves sense hair movement and are sensitive to even the slightest draft. At the base of the hair, the hair root widens to a round hair bulb. The hair papilla, which supplies the hair root with blood, is found inside the bottom of the hair bulb. New hair cells are constantly being made in the hair bulb close to the papilla which you can see in this picture. Now let's see the structure of the hair and how does this hair grows. New cells are constantly forming in the hair bulb. These cells stick together and harden. The full strand of hair develops from this group of hardened hair cells because New hardened cells keep on attaching to the hair from below. It is gradually pushed up out of the skin. In this way, a single hair on your head grows at a rate of about 1 cm per month. Facial hair and especially eyelashes, eyebrows and body hair grows at a slower pace. Whether it is straight or curly will depend on the cross-sectional shape of hair. Round hair grows straight out of the skin. The more oval shaped the cross section is, the curlier the hair will be. The color of the hair is determined by the amount of melanin in the hardened cells. This can vary a lot from person to person and it changes over the course of a lifetime. 
the amount of melanin typically decreases as people get older and more hair gets trapped inside the hair it then loses its color and turns white depending on one's original hair color and the number of white hairs that grow the hair on their head turns gray or white now let's see about the hair growth cycle as long as new hair cells continue to grow in the hair bulb the hair continues to grow longer this growth phase is also called anagen phase at any point in time about 90% of a person's total amount of hair is in this growth phase depending on where on the body a hair grows the growth phase will last longer or shorter for instance the growth phase of hair on your head can last several years so it can grow to over a meter in length if you don't have it cut the growth phase is especially short for eyelashes eyebrows nasal hair and ear hair those hairs only grow for about 100 to 150 days so they can't get that long at the end of the growth phase the hair root separates from the papilla then a transitional phase called catagen phase starts lasting about 2 to 4 weeks when the hair has separated completely from the papilla the supply of blood is cut off in the final resting phase which is called so called the telogen phase the hair is gradually pushed out of the skin and eventually falls out the resting phase can last several months new hair cells then start to multiply at the base of the empty hair follicle to form a new hair and the growth phase of the hair growth cycle starts all over again now let's see what causes increased hair loss because hairs continue to enter the resting phase and then fall out we are constantly losing hair a healthy adult may lose about 70 to 100 hairs on their head per day but because new hairs are always growing and replacing them this natural hair loss isn't noticeable the rate of hair loss may increase noticeably if the hair roots are damaged during the growth phase or if a lot of hairs go into the resting phase at the same time if no new hair growths and replaces the hair that part of the skin becomes bald this type of hair loss is referred to as alopecia regardless of how large the bald spot is or whether it affects the scalp or body hair in some types of alopecia the hair may grow back but baldness can also be permanent one typical example is gradual hair loss in men a male pattern hair loss some general tips and tricks that benefit all hair types are as follows lastly it's worthy knowing a few handy things that apply to any hair texture and concern first thing is get regular trims if your hair is looking unhealthy it may be because it needs a snip getting hair cut every 6 to 8 weeks is considered to be beneficial for reducing breakage and split ends as well as growth second thing is use warm not hot water dosing hair in hot water can dry it out and if dyed can quickly fade color you don't have to endure a freezing cold shower or bath just switch to lukewarm water instead third make sure you are getting the nutrients in your diet even your diet can benefit your hair protein also known as has building block will only reach the hair if enough is consumed if you are lacking in it expect to notice brittleness and dryness iron is also an important source of life for hair when the body doesn't have enough hair growth can be affected 
vitamins a and the c are both looking out for two the former is needed to produce has natural oils while the latter aids collagen production thereby strengthening hair and don't forget omega 3 fatty acids these are needed for hydration and overall scalp health fifth go natural where possible letting her hair breathe can work wonders this can involve restricting heat use by letting it hair dry and avoiding straighteners and curling irons even putting hair up in a tight ponytail can cause strain so leave it down to stop the pull and if you don't need to use a styling product don't use it that way you will reduce residue build up so be natural and maintain the strength of this hair and that's it for today's video i hope so you got some idea about what is the structure of hair and how does it grow and take care of your hair and be natural we'll meet in the next video with the next science fact treasury series until then it's goodbye from sam take care